Well, hello once again. Glad to have you with me for another time in studying the Word of God, another Field of Fire live broadcast of the study of the Word of God. We thank the Lord for you today, tonight, or whenever you're listening to the broadcast. We're excited about the Word tonight. We believe that the Spirit of God is going to give us a right now word for the time in which we're living in, folks, because we're in some difficult serious but glorious times amen so we know that the plan of god is being unfolded we're seeing the scriptures unfolded right before our face and we must we must take heed to what the spirit of god has to say amen so we must be positioned where we can hear the truth that's present for now and i believe the spirit of god has given us through the field of fire alive the truth that the world the church and everyone needs to hear during this time we're not the only one that's ministering it but i believe it's by the spirit of God those who has the ear to hear what the Spirit has to say who desires to know the truth will know the truth and the truth will make them free so we thank the Lord again tonight so let's pray and let's go into what we're going to share with you tonight from the study of the word father we thank you for the Holy Spirit we thank you for the spirit of wisdom revelation and the knowledge of you father we thank you for the Issachar anointing God that you placed upon us that you can help us to guide people into knowing the times and knowing what we are to do Father, you get the glory tonight let the word be uh, be sharp tonight. Let it be to the point, God, and that your people's eyes be open, all of our eyes be open, and God, that captives be set free. You be glorified, and the enemy's camp be destroyed, the enemy's plan in people's lives be demolished, and that you be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, I want you to turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 24. This is a teaching that I did an, a while back, but the Holy Spirit really placed it on my heart to reinforce it uh, again with you tonight. And we're going to talk about deception. We're going to talk about the dangers of spiritual deception because folks we're in a time that we must not be deceived we must not be led astray because there's a spirit of delusion in the earth there's a spirit of deception and who the enemy wants to deceive is the is the people of god like never before he's got the world but we've got to be on guard and that's why we've got to be led by the spirit of god we've always got to be led by the holy spirit because if we're led by anything other than the holy spirit we could end up in deception. So we're going to talk about the dangers and the power of spiritual deception. Now, we're going to read, we're going to launch this from Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to look at just a couple of verses here. Because when the disciples wanted to know some of the signs of the last days, when they asked Jesus, what would be the signs of thy coming in the end of the, uh, in the, end of the world? The Bible says here uh, in Matthew 24 and verse 4, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. And in verse 3 is where the disciples asked him, What will be the signs of your coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered that question here with these two verses. He said, uh, Take heed that no man deceive you. In other words, he says, Be aware of deception. But folks, we're in a season and a time, and if we're not careful, you know the Bible says, let him that think he stand, take heed lest he fall. In other words, if you think you got the handle on everything, you think you, 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 you're you, ironclad in the sense that the enemy won't deceive you, you better watch out, you better be on, be on guard, you better be careful because the enemy has, has various forms of deception and you don't want to get caught up in not one of his forms of deception. So spiritual deception is the most deadly type of deception. And I, I would say like this, just about all deception is spiritual. But I'm talking about when we're deceived concerning spiritual things, we're, we're conceived, we're deceived concerning the word of God, we're con deceived concerning what God wants us to know spiritually that would prepare us to be in right standing with God and that prepare us to be prepared for Jesus Christ when he returns, when he returns, because you see, the Lord is coming. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming in power, hallelujah, and we need to be ready and we need to be prepared. But the enemy has a, a, a scheme and a plan, and his plan is full of deception. So we're gonna look at some things tonight that's gonna help us uh, uh, to be more on guard, to help us to be more aware of deception and one of the areas of deception that, that 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 the enemy has released upon the world and the church is is this this deception concerning prayer there's a major deception concerning prayer because the enemy knows how powerful prayer is and if he can get us deceived in our prayer life 
Folks, he can get us deceived in a lot of other areas because he knows prayer is where we get direction from God. Prayer is where we hear from the Holy Spirit. And one of the deceptions concerning prayer is that you do not have to have a consistent and a fervent prayer life. Otherwise, just pray once in a while. Pray when you're in trouble. Just pray. Just pray when you feel like you need to pray. And, and don't don't be so fanatical about prayer. You see, this is deception. Now, I, I'm I'm kind of playing the devil's advocate here because I'm putting out what the enemy is putting in the minds of people and God's people concerning prayer. That you do not have to be consistent. You don't have to be radical. You don't you don't have to be intense in prayer. You don't have to declare decrees. Just just pray the simple uh, Our Father with God heaven prayer that's enough and i believe that prayer was just a model prayer and, and that prayer is good to use now but that's a model prayer but that one of the major deceptions is concerning prayer and, 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 and when our prayer calls folks we need to press into them like never before because that's where we get instruction from god i don't know about you but i get i get revelation from god through prayer God shows me his will through prayer. But many people are deceived concerning prayer. They're concerning about the, the, the fervency of prayer. They're con deceived concerning corporate prayer. In other words, you don't need to pray corporately. That's deception. In other words, you don't need to gather with a group of people on a prayer line or gather in a people in a building or in a room and, and y'all join hands or y'all come together in prayer. A lot of people have been deceived concerning that. Oh, I can pray in my own house. I can pray, in, I can pray by myself. I don't need to meet with them. No, that's deception. God has designed corporate prayer for his people. And I want you to know, because corporate prayer is the most powerful and it can be the most effective kind of prayer. So corporate prayer is important. There's a deception concerning prayer. The deception concerning how we are to pray. Amen. We are to pray under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We are to pray in the Spirit. We are to pray in tongues. Every believer should pray in tongues. Amen. Because that's that's the mandate for communicating directly with God. This deception concerning prayer, folks, we got to overcome it. And, 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 and uh, being distracted by things that would keep us out of prayer, following, following God's plan for prayer is important. The guidelines for prayer that God has put out because God works within his plan, amen? And one of the plans for God's, for prayer that God has put out that we are to pray in the spirit. Paul mentioned praying in the spirit and that's a guideline. And when we follow God's guidelines, prayer will be effective. He said, I'm talking about praying in tongues. Many of you don't speak in tongues. You say, well, I don't speak in tongues because I don't believe that's for today. Well, just because you don't believe that tongues is for today, that don't mean it's not for today. Amen. Everything is not governed by what you believe. Amen. It's all governed by the word of God. So we must understand these things because deception, folks, is running rapidly. We must not be deceived. And, and, and uh, the, the prayer deception ha has a lot to do with, with, with whether we pray in the name of Jesus or not. A lot of people are praying. They're still not praying in the name of Jesus. You know, prayer is invalid unless you pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Prayer must be always in Jesus' name. Amen. Because that he says, anything you ask in my name, I'll do it. So there's deception concerning prayer. Is that uh, you don't need to have a consistent prayer life. You don't need to be fervent in prayer. Amen. I'm talking about fervent in prayer. Intense, zealous for prayer. Excited about prayer. You don't have to be consistent in prayer. No. Uh, I heard one guy say one time, he said, well, if, if you ask God for something more than one time, it's a sign that you don't have faith. Man, if I ask God for something 10 times, it's a sign that I do have faith because it's a sign that I believe he is going to bring it to pass. Amen. Because God looks and he watches for our consistency in prayer. Remember the woman with the unjust judge in Luke chapter 18? That she would not go away. She continued to bombard that judge. She continued to harass him, if you would say. Uh, I would say uh, until he gave her what she needed. Amen. And God wants us to harass him. He wants us to, to be consistent in prayer because uh, you, you ask God for something one time and you don't get it. A lot of people just give up. They say, well, I guess that's not for me or I don't have the ability or the power to reach God. But consistency in prayer is very important. We've got to be consistent. I'm putting an emphasis on, on prayer tonight because, uh, folks, this is an area where a lot of believers are deceived concerning prayer. And the corporate prayer gathering, the Bible says one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. In other words, you can pray and get some results by just praying in your prayer closet, sure. But some 
cases, some situations, you need the power of agreement. You need to get together with other believers who will agree with you. And Jesus said that in Matthew 18. He said, if two or three of you would agree on anything, he said, there am I, I am in the midst of that. He said, ask and it shall be given. And I believe we can ask corporately. You can ask personally or privately, but asking corporately. Corporate prayer is very important, but this deception concerning prayer, and you got a lot of church leaders, they're deceived concerning prayer. They're not making prayer a priority, and that's another deception. Prayer must be a priority. Prayer must be on the front burner and not the back burner, amen, because prayer must lead and guide us into everything. I believe in starting everything that I do for God with prayer, but you see, spiritual deception is leading people astray concerning prayer the effectiveness and being effective in prayer. Also, there's, there's, there's deception concerning the way of salvation. People are deceived concerning the way of salvation. That, that, that Jesus, and there's a teaching that says Jesus Christ is not the only way. Let me tell you something. Jesus said in, Matt, in, in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. And you see, a lot of people are trying to find other ways to get to God. You cannot get to God, the true God, any other way than through Jesus Christ. He, the Bible says there's one mediator between God and man, and that man is Christ Jesus. Amen. It's not Buddha. It's not Muhammad. It's not any other religious leader that have walked the face of the earth. All that's on the earth now is not Joseph Smith, uh, uh, not anybody, David Koresh, and none of these guys that claim to be claim to be Christ. Amen. It's Jesus Christ. There's a deception concerning the way of salvation. There's also a deception concerning the Bible as being uh, the authority. Uh, uh, the final authority. Let me tell you something. This word of God is the final authority. This 66 books is the final authority. Now, another deception concerning the scriptures is that uh, uh, the Roman Catholic Bible has 72 books. Those, seven, those extra six books were not included in the canon of scripture. Why? Because those books deal with a lot of a lot of evil practices, uh, as designed to uh, take us into a lot of deception and a lot of evil ways. And, and and God saw fit to leave those six books out of the canon of Scripture. Why? Because they're not inspired by by the Holy Spirit. They were not inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I know they have some truth in them. Uh, I've, I've heard of the book of Enoch, the book of Judas, the book of Maccabees, all these books you find in, in the Roman Catholic canon of Scripture. All the words, it's the Catholic Bible, known as the Douay version of the Bible. So if you got a Bible that says it's the Douay version, that book has, that, that Bible has 72 books, and six of those books are uninspired. The books that are inspired by the Holy Spirit that are God-breathed is in the 66 canon of the 66 books that God put in this Bible. That is the, the Word of God inspired for you and I today. There's deception concerning the Bible. There's, there's deception concerning Bible translators and, and, and a lot of this stuff. But we got to make sure that we hold to the Word of God as being infallible. You see, because the deception concerning the Scriptures. And, and another deception is that we don't need to study the Bible. You see, because a lot of people, they don't study. A lot of people, most believers, I said the majority of believers, really don't study the Bible. Amen. And, and, and the way you can you study the Bible, one of the most accurate ways to study the Bible is to get uh, connect yourself with the teaching like the Field of Fire live broadcast. And then when you when, when the teaching is going forth, you got your Bible, you got your notes, and, and you follow along, you take notes, you make, you highlight, you, you write things down. And then that's an effective way to study the Bible. Because the Bible tells us all in 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul told, Paul told Timothy to study to show thyself approved unto God, a work when that mean not to be ashamed. In other words, every believer must study the Bible. Hey, I said every believer must study the Bible. And then you need to be involved in a Bible study. You need to be involved in an exposition of the Word of God so that you can get the right understanding. And it can motivate you to start studying on your own. Amen. But I believe we need to, we need to get under uh, teachers who, who, are, who, are, who are led by the Holy Spirit, who have, who have I would say, a basic knowledge because nobody knows it all. I don't know it all. I will never know it all. And I never have you to think that I know it all. But the little bit of knowledge that I have, I'm going to share it with you. Amen. And because God wants us to study. God wants us to know his word. He wants us to live his word. And the only way that we can know the word of God is to study. Amen. So so, so there's, there's, there's deception concerning the Bible and even the study of the Bible. Because we are commanded to study the Bible. Amen. And, and there's deception concerning how to live. Now we're going to go to the scriptures in just a little bit. But I'm kind of laying out an overview of some of the places that we're going to go. There's a deception concerning how people are to live. 
in order to be pleasing with God. And a lot of people have their own ideas. They have uh, their, 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 their own uh, way of living that they think is right because it suits them. No, a lot of mo mo the majority of people are deceived concerning how to live. And, and, and there's, concept, there's a deception concerning the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit that that's not for today. Uh, the, or the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire is not for today. That's deception, folks, because God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and he'll always be the same. And that, that if he started the church with a church that's on fire, that was baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, like what happened on the day of Pentecost, God stills wants the church to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. There's deception concerning the Holy Spirit. Whether the Holy Spirit is even real. There's a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of churches, a lot of church leaders, a lot of denominations don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't even teach the Holy Spirit. They don't even talk about the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they've been deceived by the spirit of religion. And that religious deception is one of the worst forms of deception that we can be under, folks. Because God wants us to be delivered from spiritual deception and above all religious deception because if the enemy can give a person a false sense of security to make you think that you're in right standing with God when you're not that enemy will have you in deception we got to watch out for deception watch out for deception okay now now let's look at I want I'm going to share with you some types of deception types of deception types of deception in other words ways in which people are deceived Okay, there's satanic deception because Satan has three modes of operation. He's the accuser, he's the tempter, and he's the deceiver. He's the accuser, the tempter, and he's the deceiver. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's the tempter, like he tempted Eve in the, in the garden. Amen. And he is the deceiver. Three ways of operation, mode of operation that Satan has. He deceives, he tempts, and he accuses. So deception is one of his main weapons for the last days. It's one of his main weapons from the beginning, and it's one of the main weapons for the last days. Because yeah, if you look at it like this, uh, creation and human uh, uh, humanity on the earth started in the book of Genesis. Genesis is the beginning of deception. If Satan started out uh, against man by deceiving him, don't you know he's going to close this thing out with deception? Don't you know he's going to up the ante and increase the pressure, turn up the heat on deception and make deception more intense and make more deception more, 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 more dangerous for us in the last days? Folks, the last days are days of deception. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. So, so, so Satan as the deceiver is is one that we got to get the victory over and the only one one of the ways we get the victory over 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 deception is to know the truth you got to get familiar with the truth like never before and god's going to be glorified so 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 uh this satanic deception that we just mentioned other form of deception is is religious deception that means you can be re deceived by religious leaders deceived by church amen because because if god has a true church Satan has a counterfeit church. And I want you to know there are two churches operating in the earth. And the question is, which church are you, are you a part of? And I believe the church, that, that's the true church, is the church that Jesus said, upon that, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I do believe that's the true church. That's the church that Jesus started uh, when he breathed on disciples, on his disciples in that upper room, filled them with the Holy Ghost and fire on the day of Pentecost. And I believe that's the true church. A amen. And, and you see, and if your church is not a Holy Ghost and fire, a gifts of the Spirit, miracle signs, and one is believe in the preaching uh, 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 of, of the last day outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the return of Jesus Christ, doing all that Jesus did while he was on the earth, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. If your church does not do that, my friend, you could just maybe in a church that's under deception. Amen. Because if there's a true, you better believe the enemy is going to have a false. And all we got to do is look at how religion is structured, hear what they're talking about, see how they, what the practices that they go through, go through. And we can, we can determine the true from the false. But I believe one of the keys to knowing the true from the false is to get familiar with the true first. Amen. Get familiar with the true first and you can recognize the false. So that, that religious deception, we mentioned about, we've been talking about satanic deception, deceived by Satan and demons. Amen. And, 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 and being deceived by evil spirits, we got to watch out 
for deception, folks, like never before. We got to watch out for deception. And then that's that religious deception, that re de being deceived through religion, through tradition, through, through, through church leaders or religious leaders that, that have uh, uh, developed a uh, man's way of Christianity, a man's way of trying to reach God. Watch out for deliver, re religious deception. Then there's self-deception. People get deceived themselves if they're not careful. Folks, one of the worst forms of deception, I believe, is self-deception. Because a lot of people have deceived themselves. Amen. You know, Paul said something here in, in, in Galatians chapter 6. I'm going to go to the book of Galatians chapter 6. Oh, I was just there and I just, I just went away from it. Let's go back to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. Look what Paul says here. He said, if a man thinketh himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. In other words, anybody who thinks that they're all of that and a bag of chips, but really you don't amount to a whole lot. Paul says, if a man thinketh himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceiveth himself. Folks, that self-deception is what we got to watch out for. And the self-deception self is rooted in pride. Pride is the root, I believe, of all deceptions. In other words, people get into pride. Pride, pride is the reason that people don't pray. You see, because when people, you don't, you don't feel like you need to have a, a, a consistent, uh, continuous, fervent prayer life. When you feel like you don't need to have a prayer life that spends time in the presence of God, that's a sign of pride. Pride is saying, God, I don't need you. Pride is saying, I can make it today and, and, and I'll catch up with you later when, when I get in trouble. No, that's pride. And see, that's self-deception. That's a person who think he is able to handle situations by himself. He, he, the Bible says, well, uh, if a man thinketh himself to be something when he's nothing, he has deceived himself. That's Galatians chapter 6 and verse 3. So you got to watch out for self-deception. A lot of people have deceived themselves to think that they don't they, they don't need God. So so religious deception, religious religious deception, self-deception, and satanic deception. And satanic deception is connected to or related to evil spirits that will speak into your mind, evil spirits that will give you a thought, evil spirits that will put negative imaginations in your mind. And, and, and this is the work of the enemy. He speaks to us just like just like a person can speak to us, because evil spirits. They have a voice and we got to watch out for evil spirits giving us direction, telling us what, what, what's, what's opposed to the word of God, telling us what's not in accord with the word of God. We got to watch out for, 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 for evil deception that comes through evil spirits and it's called imaginations. And what the Bible says to do with imaginations, cast them down. In other words, whenever you get an evil thought or when the enemy tells you not, you're not going to make it, you're not going to be successful, you're going to lose this battle. No, you say, in the name of Jesus, I cast that down and I don't receive it. Because if you don't cast down the evil or the negative thought, it will set up and it will destroy your faith. And before you know it, you're thinking defeat, you're operating in defeat, and your life will be a life that's defeated. No, we got to cast down the thoughts of the enemy. Amen? Because if we don't do it, we'll go into and we'll be taken in by deception. Amen? Casting down imagination and every negative thought that exhausts itself against the knowledge of the Word of God. In other words, when the enemy gives you a thought, you say, I don't receive that. You see, folks, because the battleground is in the mind. We got to win the battle in the mind because the enemy attacks us in the mind and he'll try to put negativity in your mind about what you're dealing with and what you're going through right now. But you got to cast it down. You got to cast it down because satanic deception works through evil spirits. Okay, let's see what else we have for you tonight. What else we're going to share with you before we, we leave tonight. Okay, people are deceived to think that they can live, a, live the way they want and still be acceptable to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want to start with verse 9. People are deceived to think that they can live how they want to live and still be acceptable to God. And this still is a form of self-deception. And self-deception comes through us making the wrong choices. You know, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 16, 25, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end they are are the ways of death. In other words, there's a way of living that seems right to, to people. It just seems right. Why does it seem right? Because it's what they want to do. It's how they want to do it. It's who they want to, uh, who they want to follow, and who 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 pleases them. Amen. That's that's a way that seems right to a man, 
but the end there are other ways of death that's proverbs 16 25 so we must not do what's right in our own eyes like israel did in the old testament they did what every man that was right in his own eyes and that's deception we must be led by the word of god we must be led by the spirit of god and we will not be deceived A amen so but people are deceived to think that they can live the way they want to live and still be acceptable to God. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, as I'm going to read here, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Listen, listen to this. I'll follow along with me if you if, if you have your Bible. He says, look what Paul says here, verse 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of God. Okay, so what Paul is saying here, he's saying people who live these kinds of lifestyles, don't think you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. Don't think that your lifestyle will be acceptable to God. Now, let's go through this list here. Uh, because these are ways in which many people are in deception. Because they think they can live these kinds of lifestyle and still be acceptable to God. He says, uh, he says, be not deceived. Neither fornicators, that's people who commit sexual sin and claim to be Christians. Or they, they claim to live for God, but yet they want to commit fornication that's sex outside of marriage between two unmarried people two unmarried people having a sexual relationship they, he said neither fornicators nor idolaters and that people who have idols in their lives or put things who people who love things or other people more than they love god that's an idolater nor adulterers and adultery is another form of sexual sin that married people commit nor effeminate now, effeminate means a, a, a man who has feminine tendencies. We would call him today a homosexual. Amen. Oh, and, and in that, I will add homosexuality and lesbianism. Amen. In other words, people are deceived to think that they can live these lifestyles and, and still inherit and be a part of the kingdom of God. See, see, this is deception. This is major deception. He said, nor effeminate, uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revival, revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And a lot of people claim to be Christians. They're living and they have these things in their lifestyle. And let's, let's look at the rest of the list, list here. And it says here, uh, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners. Drunkards, people who use alcohol, people who use drugs to numb their senses, and, and they think they're going to be acceptable to God. The, this Bible said, no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of God. A amen. 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 You see, because deception. People are deceived to think they can live the way they want to live and be acceptable to God. Folks, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you tonight truths that will help prepare you for the Lord's return. You see, because if you get rid of this stuff in your life, you make the decision that you're going to change. You're going to repent of your sins. You're going to turn away from these things. When Jesus Christ comes, you will be one of the ones that will be accepted with him. But don't think you can have this stuff going on in your life that Paul mentions there in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. And you can be acceptable and you will inherit the kingdom of God. No, 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 no. He said, nor drunkards, nor revilers nor extortioners, nor, and he said, nor covetous. That says, you jealous of people? You jealous of what somebody else has? He said, you better get rid of that lifestyle. You better repent of that attitude because you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Deception is for people to think they can live the way they want to and still be acceptable to God. Folks, God says, Jesus said, broad is the way that leadeth under, into destruction and many are gonna go that way. He said, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there will be that find it. Folks, God wants us to be, he wants you to be a part of that few. Amen? So that you can enter into eternal life with Jesus Christ. But folks, I want you to know that deception is a major weapon of the enemy in the last day. And the deception has to do with, with, with to beguile someone. The Bible says the serpent beguiled Eve. In other words, he tricked her. Amen. To, to, to trick someone, to con someone, to lie, forms of deception, to, to be in delusion, uh, uh, to be delusional, like forever. Somebody said, well, he or she is delusional. No, that person is deceived. 
No, you see, because it all has to do with us guarding ourselves against spiritual deception, because spiritual deception will cause a lot of people to end up in the lake of fire. Amen. I have to tell you the truth tonight because, folks, Jesus Christ is coming. And then that day that he comes will be the day of judgment for every person on planet Earth. Every person will be judged on judgment day. And that will be the day of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The judgment will be who is ready, who is prepared to go back to go back to, to meet the Lord when he comes or who will be a part of this this world scene that's going to be destroyed at the second coming of Jesus Christ, which will be the kingdom of darkness. There's only uh, there's only the kingdom of light, which is God's kingdom, and the kingdom of darkness. Don't be deceived to be a part of the kingdom of darkness. Guard yourself against spiritual deception, and God will be glorified. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. And and the last one I'll share with you tonight is strong delusion. We're going to talk about strong delusion a little bit. The Bible says in the last days, strong delusion will come. Strong delusion will come. And I want to go to the book of Revelation chapter 19 first. I'll go to Revelation chapter 19. Strong delusion. You see, that's why that's why the church must be on guard against deception because strong delusion is coming on the world scene and, and this strong delusion is coming really to test our faith and to test our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. And we're going to look at verse 20. Revelation chapter 19, and let's look at verse 20. Okay, um, and, I, and I'm going to go to Revelation 13 in just a little bit, but we're talking about the strong delusion that's coming on the world scene. We must guard ourselves for it. And the Bible says, and the beast, this is verse 20 of Revelation 19, and the beast was taken, and him, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that have worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So the strong delusion that's coming is coming is through the Antichrist, who is the man of sin, that's that's about to appear on the world scene, and he's going to deceive the multitudes by getting persuading them to take a mark in their right hand or in their forehead that would mark them for destruction, that will mark them. To be permanently a part of Satan's kingdom. Folks, we got to watch out. We got to be aware because this, this is the strong delusion. And, and I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 13, which really explains this a lot more. And I want you to know preparation for this is even is taking place even now that they are already readying this, this mark, readying this, this form of deception so that people will be deceived and be taken unaware. The Holy Spirit don't want you taken unaware, folks. He don't want you taken unaware, my brother or my sister. And that's why the, this understanding is so important in the day in which we live. Okay, uh, okay. Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to chapter 13, and I'll start with verse 11. Revelation 13, 11. We're talking about strong delusion that's coming, strong deception that's coming. Amen. And it's, it's for the test our faith. And I believe that we're going, we're going to, we're, we're experiencing tests, but God is preparing us for the tests of strong delusion that's coming, because I believe that the church will, will be here uh, through the tribulation period, and we're going, we're, we're, Jesus Christ will come at the end of the tribulation, but much of the church will still be present on the earth by, while the, a lot of the Book of Revelation is, tr is transpiring. And I do believe that we're already in the tribulation. You see, because one sign that we're already in the tribulation period is that the Euphrates River is drying up. The Euphrates River has already dried up. And I think you'll find that right in Revelation chapter 16. And that's really deep into the, 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 to the book of Revelation in that 16th chapter. And, and physically, actually, today, the, the Euphrates River is drying up. And that will prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ to come, the kings of the earth to come, and Jesus Christ to come to destroy the enemies of the earth. Folks, we're in a time of trouble already. Amen. So we've got to be prepared. We've got to be on guard against deception. And look at what it says here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. He said, And I beheld another beast that's coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and he causes all the causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. In other words, there's a deceiver man, a deceiving man that's going to show up on, on, on the face of the earth 
that he is going to make the world believe that he is Jesus Christ. He's called the Antichrist. And I believe this man is already alive today. And if you're not careful, if you're not aware of the Antichrist, you just may fall into his trap. Amen. But I declare that you won't fall into his trap because God's opening your eyes to this. And we got to be sensitive and, and, and so that we don't get taken in by the strong delusion and the major deception that's about to hit planet Earth. Okay. Uh, the Bible says, verse 13, he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the, uh, of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live and he had power to give un and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast so that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as should not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he caused us all both small and great rich and poor bond and free to receive a mark in their right hand and or in their forehead that no man might bind or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name and, and here is wisdom let him have understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six and we know that number is 666 so the the the, the, the deception the strong delusion that's coming is going to come through the world system the world governmental system through a man who will be the false messiah the antichrist and he will cause all who are on the earth to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And, and, and the way he's going to make it so strong is nobody will even be able to buy or sell anything unless they have his mark. Now, folks, whatever comes to pass, whatever law they pass, don't you take no mark in your right hand. Don't you take, don't let nobody mark you in your forehead. And they're already talking about putting your, your debit card numbers in your hand so you can just scan your hand. No, stay away from that stuff. Amen. And the microchip is already in, in, in the works. They're already uh, putting the microchip in animals, pets, dogs, so that we can they can find them to try to make it look beneficial. Don't let nobody inject you with no kind of chip. Amen. Don't you take no kind of mark in your forehead or in your hand because that's a deception, folks. And the, and the Holy Spirit said we got to be on guard for this strong delusion that's coming. Now, the mark of the beast will be ministered in three forms where it says here uh, uh, and by no means by, by, by or sell uh, let's go back up here to verse verse 16 and he causes both all great uh, uh, small and great rich and poor to receive a mark in their in their right hand or in their foreheads okay so there's a mark there's a mark there'll be at least like a number could be an implant could be a chip something that will be embedded under the skin and let's look at verse uh 17 the three forms of the mark of the beast now you gotta you gotta you gotta be aware of three forms that this thing is gonna come verse 17 that no man might buy nor sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name okay so there's a mark there's a name and there's a number there's a mark, there's a name, and there's a number. Three means through which they will they will minister this form of deception. So you got to watch out for it. any markings. And that's why it's, it's a deadly thing to mark your body. Amen. Because that's what the Antichrist is going to do. That's what he's going to deceive the world through is markings. Amen. And that's, that's, why, that's why I don't have any tattoos on my body. I will never get a tattoo on my body. Why? Because the Bible says we should not. Amen. Because if we do, we're setting ourselves up for the Antichrist because people who are tattooed and it, 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 it may come through a tattoo amen it may be a new form of tattoo and you got to watch out folks getting these tattoos all the antichrist got to do is put that mark of the beast in a tattoo and, and, and folks are hey that, that's the latest tattoo let's get that one yeah you go ahead and get that one you get that one you mark yourself for, for for doom and destruction amen so it'll be a mark you got to watch out for the mark which could be a tattoo or marking of some kind and they also said the name of the beast the name of the beast and that's why you got to watch out for carrying the names of men or, and, and designers on your clothing amen now, now 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 it's not it's not an issue now but the day will come that the mark of the beast could come through a designer name Notice the Bible says is in the name of the beast, and it also says the third form will be the number of his name. 
Otherwise, it would be the number, and that number would be 666, 300, three score, 600, three score, and six, which is the number 666. And they can descri describe 666 in, in so many ways. Uh, amen. Uh, it is a symbol with three rings put together with one ring on the top and two rings on the bottom. That too is a symbol of the beast. That's a mark of the beast. Amen. Uh, the old Ballantyne Ale symbol. Amen. You Google Ballantyne Ale, you'll see the symbol. Ballantyne Ale used to be a type of beer called Ballantyne Ale. And, and it had those three rings. That too is a symbol of the beast because those three rings represent three sixes. Amen. And there are many other symbols. So we got to be careful, folks, that we don't take in, don't be caught up in the strong delusion that's coming because the results and the end results of those who take the mark of the beast, the Bible says we saw in Revelation chapter 19, they will end up in the lake of fire. Folks, we've got to be on guard at the, at the time in which we live. But I believe that the Holy Spirit is sending us a warning, is sending us preparation so that we will not be taken in by the strong delusion that is coming. Amen. And deception, folks, we got to watch out for it. So that's why we got to be people who will speak the truth, people who will live the truth, people who love the truth. And, and I want you to know it's, it's the truth that will keep us out of deception. So as I close tonight, I'm going to share with you how to guard against being deceived. Okay, number one, how to guard against being deceived. Okay, is through the Holy Spirit. I would say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very important. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the revelation gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the discerning of spirits, the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's why we put a high priority on the Holy Spirit, because he is the one that will keep us out of deception. He will help us to discern, to spiritually discern through spiritual means, not by way the situation looks. It's the discerning of spirits. Ask God to give you an increase of discernment of the Holy Spirit in your life. That you will be able to discern the spirit that operates through an individual. A spirit, the spirit that operates through a church or through a ministry. or The spirit that's operating here. You've got to be able to discern. And that discernment comes through the Holy Spirit. That's why the gifts of the Spirit are so important now. Because the key to being shielded, the key to being protected from discern, from, 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 from deception, is the, is the gifts of the discerning of spirits. Amen. I pray that the discerning of spirits, that you'll know things by the Spirit of God. So the discerning of spirits is, is, is one of the main we, ways through which we can get to know uh, deception and recognize it. And, and number two, uh, that we must cast down evil imaginations. In other words, when you get a thought in your head that's not according to the Word of God, uh, that, that, that enemy tells you you're not going to survive that sickness, that enemy tells you you're not, you're not coming out of this situation, that you're not going to be victorious over, victorious over what the enemy is trying to tell you that you're dealing with right now, when and, and any thought that, that speaks defeat to you, any thought that wants to put fear in you, you got to cast that thing down. Amen. You must not be afraid. You must not let fear overtake you regardless of what you're going through. You got to declare, I shall prevail. You got to declare, I am victorious. You got to declare, this is under my feet. You got to cast down that imagination. If you're going to get victory over deception, you must cast down the negative imaginations of the enemy. Amen. And, 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 and the last one I'll give you is in John chapter 8, verse 32. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Well, who is the truth? But Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. You got to know Jesus Christ in a real way. Having had the born again experience, have, uh, knowing him through the power of the Holy Spirit, having experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Yes, I said Holy Ghost and fire, because this is what we got to have, folks, because the fire will illuminate and expose the plan and the deception of the enemy. Fire brings enlightenment. Fire brings revelation. So we need Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to win over deception. And we need to, to operate by the word of God. We got to know the truth and the truth will make us free. John 8, 32 says, ye shall know the truth and the truth that you know will make you free. And that means being free from being deceived, being free from being trapped by the enemy and what he wants to do to us in these last days. Folks, Victory over deception will give you victory in just about every area of your life. 
Because when, whenever we come under attack, the enemy is always going to tell us, this is too much for you. You're not going to make it out of this. No, that's a lie of the devil. God has already told, told us that we have victory and by his stripes we are healed. That's what we got to declare. That's what we got to stand on. We got to declare and prophesy our victory because God has already promised it to us. Don't be deceived by the way it sounds or the way it looks. By the way it sounds. You say, what do you mean? Well, you see, because fear comes by hearing. Fear comes by hearing. A lot of people are into fear because of what they have heard. No, you got to cast that thing down. You got to you got to throw that thing out the window and say, no, this will not be my end. This will not be my lot. I will not die in this situation because by his stripes I am healed. I will not die, but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So, so we got to get victory over speaking the truth that we know and the truth will make us free. How do you get victory over deception? Number one, the Holy Spirit and the gift of the discerning of spirit. Number two, we've got to be willing to cast down negative imagination. And number three, we got to live by the truth of the word of God. We got to know the truth. We've got to know Jesus Christ, know his written word and live by it. Folks, if we do this, victory will be ours. We will not be deceived and don't be deceived concerning prayer. Amen. Make prayer a priority and God will be glorified. Amen. Thank God for you tonight. Thank God for your time tonight. I hope this will help you in the days to come because the deception will get stronger. The deception will get more, 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 more prevalent, more, more increased as we go forth because he's always trying to deceive. He's always trying to tempt and he always wants to accuse. I'm talking about the enemy. And, and, and if you got pride operating, get rid of the pride. You see, because pride was the downfall of Lucifer. Who was, a, who was a high exalted angel. He deceived himself to think that he could be like God, but, 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 but it was because of pride. That's why you gotta get rid of pride. That's why we gotta always humble ourselves. God works through people of humility, amen? Well, pride is a major form and the root of deception. So my, my, my prayer is what some of the things I've said that help you, to prepare you, something that you can share with somebody else to help guard them against deception because strong delusion is coming. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for sending your word to heal us, to shield us, and to deliver us. Now, Father, we pray that this word tonight will go forth with power, has gone forth with power, and it will set captives free and destroy, destroy the work of the deceiver and the lives of people. And we give you praise. We give you thanks right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, you need to make him the Lord of your life. Amen. You need to repent of your sins, ask God to forgive you, and make a decision that you're going to live for God through Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Say, Lord, I humble myself and I repent of my sins. I know I haven't been living right. And tonight, I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. Lord, I'm turning away from a life of sin. I'm repenting of my sin. Come on, say it. I'm repenting of my sin. And I'm receiving Jesus Christ right now as my Lord and Savior to give me a new life, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, and give me a home with him for eternity. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. My brother, my sister, you prayed that prayer. Amen. If you haven't prayed that prayer, you need to pray that prayer before you go to sleep tonight. Amen. Before the day is over, you need to ask Jesus Christ into your life if you don't know him. Because a lot of people are deceived by church attendance. They're deceived by so many other things. They're received through, deceived through their religious deception. Because the enemy has a lot of people deceived through what the world calls the church. Notice why I said what the world calls the church. They, because they believe that if they just associate with the church or their family is associated with the church, they think they'll be acceptable to God. But religious deception is a major weapon of the enemy against society. And folks, God wants us to be guarded against that. It comes with knowing Jesus Christ in a real way. And God's going to be glorified. Amen. Thank you for your time tonight. May the Lord bless you tonight. If you want to support us financially, go to our website, harvestcenter.com. Follow the prompts there. Hit the donate button. So where you grow. If the teaching's been helping you, if the teaching's been inspiring you, motivating you, opening up your eyes to truth that you didn't know before, you need to sow where you grow. Or support us and God will be glorified. Support us with your prayers and we'll be praying for you. And until the next video, we love you and continue to feel the fire alive and stay on guard for deception.